morning. And welcome to worship this first Sunday in the new year, but more specifically, Epiphany Sunday. We are observing communion this morning. For those of you worshiping at home, please gather your elements now so that you will be ready when we are. Hopefully each and every one picked up a little cup or was given one. We are continuing with our service both online and in person. The bishop and the health officials do recommend worshiping virtually at home. We will continue as we have been with the request if you have been to a high risk situation such as social gathering outside the people with which you live with, you should worship with us from home for at least 10 days after possible exposure or call the pastor and we will work out a solution and here we are at least eight or more feet apart, so we're good. For those of you who are worshiping in person, please worship in silence. Keep your mask properly in place at all times, except for the communion part, and observe good physical distance of six feet or more. While mass, physical distance, and hand cleansing are required on church grounds, we cannot guarantee you will not be infected by the coronavirus 19, as it is a highly infectious disease. We cannot promise your safety from transmission on the, of the virus on the church grounds. Uh, Bible study on Wednesday, uh, Proverbs 31. We have worked our way all the way to the end of that book. Uh, Facebook Live at 5. And then Paul, yeah, we'll just continue reading in the Bible and pick up Ecclesiastes. I thought about going to the New Testament, but... Uh, there are lots of good things I want to teach from Ecclesiastes, so we'll just continue following week with that. Um, for those of y'all who have received the newsletter, um, it's been sent electronically. I do have a few copies in the back for anyone who wants to pick up one. I also have a copy of the liturgical calendar. I know I sent it out electronically. Uh, if you want to print it off and know ahead of time, of anything that as far as the scripture reading for each Sunday. I am available for visits via the phone. You may send your prayer request by email or by calling. Most of our hymns and psalms are from the United Methodist Hymnal, the 1989 edition. Regular worshipers receive a service folder by email. If you would like to receive a folder, please contact the church and give us your email. We also are putting this out, this uh, service folder, on our new um, web page. So you can also access it there on the web page. Let us center now with these centering words for worship. Light shines in the darkness. A star guides our way to the Christ child. Hope is born again. Our opening hymn in number 245, the first Noel.
darkness of life. Open our eyes this morning that we may see your light in the darkness. Open our hearts that we may perceive your promise of justice and righteousness fulfilled in the babe of Bethlehem. May we, like the Magi, have a star to guide us on our journey, on our journey's quest to find the one who is truly, will truly set us free. May this time of worship bring us closer to you, that the good news of the birth of life and love will transform all lives. Amen.
first reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your God. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assembly, all assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the hips. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you, the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camel will cover your land. Young camels of Midian and Ephraim, and all from Sheba will come, bearing gold and incense, and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. A psalm setting today, Psalm 72, verse 1 through 14. O God, give the king your justice and your righteousness. May he judge your people with righteousness and justice. May he defend the cause of the poor and deliverance to the needy. May he endure while the sun and the moon endures. May he defend the cause of the poor and deliverance to the needy. May he live while the sun and the moon endures. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound. May kings and nations respect and honor him, for he delivers the needs when they call and help the helpless. He has pity on the weak and saved the lives of those in need. From oppression and violence, he redeemed their lives. Our second reading this morning is taken from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 through 12. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is, the mystery made known to me by revelation as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed by the Spirit of God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are ears together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ, and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. He intended was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with peace and confidence. Our hymn at this time, hymn number 219. <laughs>
fifth, you know, five, go. And I'm not a singer, so I'm not singing it. But the point is, there are what? How many days for Christmas? Twelve. Twelve days. And the twelfth day is coming up. And that is the day that we call Epiphany, or the day that the wise men, or the magi, or as we heard the song, the three kings. Nowhere in scripture does it say three, but we just assume there were what? Three kings. For years at the prison, I would debunk everything that people knew about Christmas. And by that I would mean, I would point out the inconsistencies. For example, how many of us really thought that there were just one day for Christmas instead of what? Twelve. And the day that you should receive gift is later this week. That's when the three kings, three wise men, whatever you want to call them, came and presented the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And also, you know, we have the scene where we have the baby in the manger and the wise men and the shepherd and the angels. But as we read in scripture, in Matthew, verse 9, they came and worshipped him where he was in the house. He was no longer in the manger because it was days after they moved into the house. Yes, he was born in a manger, but we saw last week, a week later, they took him to the temple and then they returned to Bethlehem and then they... The scripture goes on and on. But one of my favorite part of Christmas is Epiphany. And Epiphany is celebrating the fact that the three or the wise men came and brought these gifts and worship the Christ child. I know that growing up the way I did as a Hispanic, I liked the three wise men day because that you also get gifts on those days. And I tried to keep that tradition in my family and the reason for that is I like more what? Gifts. And the gifts are cheaper in after Christmas sale. But let us examine the text and see that Epiphany is so much more. And why we should indeed not only celebrate it, but acknowledge that the light has indeed appeared. And I want to hook three scriptures together today. The Isaiah scripture, the Matthew scripture, and then the epistle, the Ephesian scripture. For they all three go along, and if you follow the lectionary, you will see that the scriptures all speak to the day. In the Old Testament, we see the prophet is predicting the birth of the true king. That this light appeared and shined. And that all would come to him. And as we read in that scripture, towards the end, that they will come from Midia and Ephraim and from Sheba, bearing gold and incense. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that exactly what the wise men brought? They brought what? Gold and incense. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So Isaiah predicted the birth of Christ and that the wise men would prayer and bring gifts and worship him for he is the light of the world. As we dwell in darkness, this great light would shine forth and they would come to him and worship him. We see that fulfillment in the gospel, in Matthew where the wise men did come. But they were looking for a king, and so they went to the current ruling king, King Herod, and said, where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we have seen this great light, this star, and we have come to worship him. 
And Herod was disturbed, and he, obviously, he is king, and if somebody else is born to be king, that means he's going to get what? Replaced. He didn't like that, so he said, find out who this person is while he's a baby, and we didn't read the entire scripture today, continuing in Matthew chapter 2, that Herod went off and killed a bunch of babies, trying to bump off Christ, the Messiah. But the meaning of this is that the birth of Christ was not only for the Jews, but was for who? All people. And that's why the wise men who were not Jewish came to do what? To worship him. And so picking up in Ephesians, we see that Paul understood that. It was truly an epiphany for him. An epiphany is used in two ways. The first one is a religious way where we celebrate the wise men come and worshiping the Christ child. But if you read in the dictionary, it is usually a sudden manifestation or perception of the essential nature or meaning of something. And as usually dictionaries don't quite get the meaning out to us. It's a sudden, all of a sudden you understand something. It's a sudden manifestation or perception. You suddenly perceive something that you haven't understood before. Another definition of it is the appearance or manifestation, especially of a divine nature. And that's what we see in Christ, the God incarnate, Emmanuel. Epiphany is about God manifesting himself through Christ. Last definition I want to read. It's an illuminating discovery. A realization or disclosure. And that is what Paul came to the conclusion. It was an epiphany for him. He came to the realization of who Christ is. And what he means to all of us. Paul writes in Ephesians, For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace which was given to me for you. That is the mystery made known by revelation. In other words, back in the Old Testament time, up to the point that Jesus was born. The, it was a mystery. And a mystery is something that is what? Not known. But the good news for you and I is we have an epiphany. We have come to a sudden realization. A sudden disclosure. We have discovered who Christ is. Jesus of Nazareth is God incarnate. And he is the light of the world. And this mystery is no longer a mystery. And this mystery is not only for the Jews, but for who? For all of us. Paul goes on and writes in reading this, Then you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of God. And I hope and pray that's what we truly do today is we come to an understanding. We understand the insight that Paul had concerning the mystery of Christ, Jesus the Christ, which was not known to people in other generations as it is, has now been revealed by the Holy Spirit of God. God has revealed us to us. And we have come to realize and understand this mystery. And this mystery, as Paul so clearly points out, picking up in Ephesians chapter 6, this mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body. And share us together in the promise 
in Christ Jesus. And I don't know if you got the full implication if that light clicked on for you. But in Old Testament time and before Jesus Christ, the only people that were saved were who? The Jews. They were the chosen people. But they lost their way. They were chosen to be a people to lead all other nations to God. They were supposed to be a nation of priests. But they failed their job. You see, God's plan has always been and always is and will be that he would save all of us. The famous verse that we all know, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he what? Gave his only begotten Son. The mystery is that was not known before Jesus and that Paul is so clearly proclaiming is that the gospel is not only for the Jews and the word gospel is what? The good news! The good news for you and me is that God loves us and he has adopted all of us. And that's what Paul means. That the gospel of the Gentiles. That are there. The Gentiles are heirs together. In other words. Not only the Jews are saved. But we are also saved. If we have faith. In Jesus Christ. That we are members together. Of one body. We are members together. Of one body. Paul goes on and explains how he became a servant of this gospel and how he would preach it and how he is the least of the least. And because of this gospel, which is picking up in verse 11, according to the, his eternal purpose that he accomplished in our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, this has been God's plan all along. God's plan is that he has and has always loved all people. And he accomplished this through Jesus Christ. And because of your faith, my faith in Jesus Christ, as the scripture said, in him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. To me, that is great news. Good news. That you and I can approach God in freedom and confidence. Once I understood what epiphany is, a sudden insight. And that insight was that I and you and whoever we are, male, female, Jew, Gentile, rich, poor, black, white, Hispanic, God loves all of us. God loves me and God loves you. And God made a way for you and I. He sent his son who lived and died, but more importantly, has risen again. And because of our faith in Christ, we may approach God in freedom and confidence. And so, for me, Epiphany is about this great light, this great gift. See, many of us, as I started out this sermon, I like the gifts. But the greatest gift that God gave us was his son, Jesus, the word of the Lord. This time we'll have special music. <coughs>
The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, before the mountains were brought forth, or you had formed the earth from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth light on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. revealed yourself, all light and all salvation. You sent a star to guide wise men to where the Christ was born, and in your signs and witnesses, in every age and through all the world, you have led your people from far places to his light. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the cup, gave thanks to you. Oh, i the wrong part. Sorry about that. He took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, our honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Because there is one Lord, we who are many are one body. For we are all partakers of the one Lord. The bread which we break is the body of Christ.
The cup over which we give thanks is the blood of Christ. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourselves to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our post-communion king, we three people. Thank you. 